Do you guys want to see an awesome interview where I talk about my life growing up on Guam, my Filipino heritage, and where my love of anime came from? Well, be sure to click the link in the description or click this link right up here to go to my friend Hibba's channel to watch an interview that she conducted where she asked me all those questions and more. I promise you, it's worth the watch. Now with that out of the way, let's get to what you actually came to see, my review of Kong Skull Island. Hey guys, the Black Critic Guy, and I'm here today to review the film Kong Skull Island. Now the story to Kong Skull Island isn't a difficult one to grasp. It follows a team consisting of scientists, soldiers, a photographer, and a tracker who go to this mysterious island that has yet to be mapped called Skull Island. And when they get there, they kind of get more than they asked for as they now have to face against Kong, the king of the island, and also try to survive all the other threats that reside in said island. That, that's basically the film. Now, when going into Kong Skull Island, there was only one thing that I wanted to see in the film, and that was Kong just tearing shit apart, kicking ass, and taking names. And for the most part, that's exactly what I got, with a lot of baggage along with it. I nearly felt the exact same feeling watching Kong Skull Island that I felt when watching Godzilla. Whenever the monster was present on screen, in this case, King Kong, those were without question the most exhilarating, exciting, thrilling, and entertaining bits in the entire film. And let's just be perfectly honest with ourselves, those were the scenes that we wanted to see the most. We didn't come to Kong Skull Island to see human drama play out in front of us. We could see that in any given movie of the week. No, we went to see this film solely to see King Kong ruling this island with an iron fist being the master of his domain, kicking ass and taking names. And you get that. You see him throwing down with so many different monsters and so many awesome action scenes with them. And you see him just like tearing shit apart. I mean, he is one of the toughest representations of Kong I have ever seen depicted on screen. Gone are the days of the emotional Kong. Just move aside now, buddy, because in comes the aggressive, badass Kong. And man, is he a welcome sight. Another huge prop I'll give this film is for its story. Now, I won't go so far to say that the story is unique, or original as it does resort to many of the cliches and tropes that we have seen in plenty of monster films before, but I will say that it was quite a refreshing take on the King Kong story. Instead of rehashing the original film, which would have been easy to do, they decide to take the difficult route and craft their own original King Kong story. Is it better than the original King Kong? Hell no! But again, I admired the fact that they decided to take their own path. And I like this story. It's entertaining. I mean, a bunch of military people, scientists, and a tracker go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kong? That sounds like a good time. There are, however, a couple things I found pretty spotty about the film. The first were the performances. Now, none of the performances were god-awful or cringeworthy. They all were pretty solid, but some did really well with their performances, while others kind of gave pretty meh, I'm kind of phoning it in type performances. The two best performances in the entire film go to Samuel L. Jackson as this Lieutenant Colonel, and of course, John C. Riley as a man who was part of World War II that crashed on Skull Island and was stuck there for 28 years. I mean, these two were the most fascinating and most interesting characters in the entire film. Let's start off with Samuel L. Jackson's character, this Lieutenant Colonel. What I love so much about the character is how complex he is. He's supposed to be kind of like one of the antagonists of the film, but you understand where this character is coming from. You understand what drives him, and he's not really evil for the sake of being evil. He has motivation, and you understand why he wants to kill Kong so badly. He's very militaristic. That's his ideology. That's his mindset. So again, makes sense, and I thought he was such an enthralling character. And then we have John C. Riley's character. Not only does he give the strongest performance in this film, but he unquestionably plays the best character. His character had the most heart, was the most interesting, likable, and charming, and out of all the characters in the film, he's the only character that I was actually rooting for to survive. I wanted him to make it out of this situation. Does he make it out of the situation? 
Well, I guess you're just gonna have to go see the film and find out. Besides those two human characters in Kong, all the other characters and performances range from meh to very forgettable. I mean, Tom Hiddleston as the leading male character was kind of blah. He just didn't really stand out that much. And he reminded me so much of Adrian Brody's character and performance from King Kong. And that is not a good sign right there. I expected much more from Tom Hiddleston. I wanted him to portray a leading man type character that I could root for and like, but his character was kind of lacking in development and I didn't really care much for him. Same goes for Brie Larson's character, the photographer. She had some decent moments here and there, but nothing that really helped her to stand out from the crowd. I think the only performance I didn't like in the entire film, and coincidentally it came from the most pointless character of the entire film, was Toby Kebbell. I don't know if that's how you say his last name, I might have butchered it, but his character was so boring, and his attempt at doing a southern accent was atrocious. It came this close to being cringeworthy. Now I know Toby Cabal is a good actor. I've seen him do good performances before, but my goodness, that it wasn't good. It wasn't good whatsoever. Another hit or miss element to Kong Skull Island was the visual effects. Sometimes I was astounded at how good the visual effects and CGI was, especially when it came to Kong and some of the monsters on this island. But then there were other times where I'm like, man, that looks terrible. And I can clearly tell that you guys are standing in front of a green screen. And I just felt so confused as to how to feel about the CGI. I liked it sometimes, and then I hated it sometimes. As for problems with Kong Skull Island, there are a few. First, this film suffers from character overload. There is just way too many characters in this film, and a lot of them were completely pointless, didn't really add much to the story, and were just extra fat that easily could have been trimmed off or taken out of the film. And I get it, they wanted a lot of characters because they wanted a big body count for this monster film. But I honestly feel like it would have been more effective if they just had a handful of characters that they developed and we could root for that are trying to make it out of this terrible situation and would put a lot of weight on these characters and make us care for them more, sympathize with them more. But because you had such a big cast of characters, you know that a lot of them are going to bite the dust and thus you don't really care much for them. And tying in with the overabundance of pointless characters, the film also has an excess amount of pointless scenes that lead nowhere and doesn't build up to anything like sometimes you'll get a shot of like the military guys going through a marsh or going through a field and you think oh okay they're gonna fight something right nope it's just them talking to each other and that's about it now you could make the excuse that these scenes are to build character but they don't use these scenes to build character they just throw like random quips or make them say one line and that's about it it doesn't really even further the story that much. And there's a whole entire subplot that revolves around Toby Cabal's character that leads absolutely nowhere. And honestly could have been taken out of the film. We just didn't need it. Overall, am I being too critical on a dumb, silly, harmless monster movie? Probably, but that's kind of what I do on this channel. After all, I am the black critic guy. I critique things. But even though I am critiquing this film very heavily, I want you all to know that I thoroughly enjoyed watching Kong Skull Island. All the scenes featuring Kong were great and worth the price of admission. And if you're going to see this film, stay till the very end. I'm not kidding, guys. Stay to the very end. There's something you need to see. And this is a very enjoyable film. Go check it out. But as always, guys, I'm not the end-all be-all opinion when it comes to Kong Skull Island. I would love to know what you guys thought about the film as well. Did you absolutely adore it? Is it your favorite King Kong film ever made? Or is it probably boring, dull, and you couldn't get into it? And let me know what is your favorite King Kong film or your favorite monster film. Comment below, let me know, and stay tuned, a bunch more videos are on their way. So, until then guys, if you'd like to support the Black Critic Guy just a smidge more, why not donate to my Patreon account? There's a link in the description, and if you'd like to send me any BCG fan mail, send it to this P.O. Box right up here. And if you'd like to be a part of the Black Critic Crew and not miss out on a single awesome video, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button, like this video if you really enjoyed it, and I'm Toy One Second, the MONSTER, known as the Black Critic Guy. Till then... Peace, YouTube.